The Checkmate 141 study was a phase three trial comparing nivolumab to standard of care in patients whose cancers had progressed on platinum. Now that really meant two cohorts. The first cohort were patients who had platinum in the locally advanced setting and who had evidence of progressive disease within six months of receiving platinum in that setting, or patients who had recurrent metastatic disease who had a platinum-containing regimen and then who progressed. So in a sense, we're talking about patients who were, some of them were first-line recurrent metastatic disease, who had just come off locally advanced therapy, and then some of them who were treated in the second-line recurrent metastatic disease. Um, what's interesting is that the efficacy appeared to be very similar when we compared those groups. So we'll talk about them really as one. These patients were enrolled on a two-to-one ratio to either receive nivolumab or standard of care. Standard of care consisted of investigator choice, either methotrexate, docetaxel, or cetuximab, which are quite reasonable choices in this setting. The control arm of uh, investigator choice uh, fared exactly as we would expect it to. Uh, single agent response rates, a one-year survival of 17%, a median progression-free survival of about two months. That's exactly what we'd expect from methotrexate, docetaxel, or cetuximab in patients with recurrent metastatic disease. What was really encouraging and heartening was to see how well nivolumab did in this trial. So first of all, a 13% response rate, and most importantly, a one-year overall survival of 36% compared to 17% with standard therapy. And so now, really, nivolumab is standard of care for patients who, are, uh, have, who have recurrent metastatic head and neck cancer, whose cancers have progressed on a platinum-containing regimen. Uh, and not only that, but uh, the efficacy came with a very favorable toxicity profile of 13% grade three or four serious adverse events. So a Checkmate 141, uh, I believe, is a game changer in the treatment of recurrent and metastatic disease. Uh, this is so far the only phase three trial that has compared uh, a single agent, uh, a checkpoint inhibitor, a PD-1 inhibitor, to uh, uh, chemotherapy, uh, investigator's choice chemotherapy in a phase three uh, randomized setting. So prior to this trial, uh, there was really no standard of care for patients who have had a recurrent or metastatic uh, disease um, and if they failed platinum-based therapy. And uh, the treatment choice was left up to the physicians to decide as far as what chemotherapy agent to use. But this is not the case since Checkmate 141 has been completed and reported. Uh, as you well know, the one-year survival uh, in the investigator's choice arm was about 16.6%, whereas in the nivolumab arm was 36%. So significant improvement compared to different uh, agents that are considered investigator's choice agents for, uh, for treatment of this disease. So I believe uh, uh, this trial uh, has resulted in a new standard clearly for this heavily pretreated patient population and this patient population that has a very poor prognosis. Um, and not only has it resulted in a, a new standard of care, it has also opened the door to investigate this agent uh, in the uh, concurrent setting, in the definitive treatment setting, the curative setting, and the early stage setting. And trials are already underway to look at these uh, possibilities in these different uh, patient groups. Uh, the important thing about it as well is that it seems to show that nivolumab is uh, also preserving quality of life for patients uh, who desperately need improvement in survival, but who also desperately need preservation of quality of life uh, at this stage of their disease. So from that standpoint, I think it's also making a major difference. So my personal experience with using nivolumab, um, it does not differ very much from what the trial uh, uh, Checkmate 141 has reported and from what uh, uh, the pembrolizumab uh, data shows in 012 and 055. Mainly that these drugs are overall, overall very well tolerated, uh, that uh, these drugs can produce fatigue uh, in about 
20% of patients um, when they receive them. Uh, and there are, overall, however, patients tolerate them well. There are, however, the rare severe toxicities that may happen occasionally to patients and those uh, focus uh, around uh, the, uh, the problems of uh, uh, immune-related uh, uh, immune toxicities, whether it is endocrine-related or whether it's uh, gastrointestinal-related or liver toxicities. Uh, but overall, I think these drugs are fairly well tolerated. As far as the response rate uh, to these uh, drugs, uh, as expected, they may produce uh, deep and early responses in a small proportion of patients, but I think the vast majority of patients uh, will basically have stable disease over a long period of time, and more importantly, as indicated, uh, their quality of life seems to be fairly well preserved when they receive these drugs.